right there is probably the most venomous spider in the world. That is a Brazilian wandering spider in my bare hand. This is not a bite you want to take. Legend has it that deep within the jungles of Central and South America, there lurks a spider that can kill a man within hours. Commonly associated with banana plants, the name banana spider strikes fear into the hearts of people across the entire continent. The spider in question that we're interested in today is better known as the Brazilian wandering spider. Notorious for being one of the most venomous spiders on the planet, the wandering spider is also reported to have an extremely bad attitude, and it's thought that an encounter with one of these arachnids must end in death, either yours or the spider's. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm a biologist working with spiders and other creepy crawlies. Ever since I was a kid, tales of the toxic terrors of the South American jungle have captured my imagination. Growing up, working with some of the strangest and even most vilified animals in the world, I've learned that many of these creatures are really just terribly misunderstood and trying to live out their lives in the secret world that runs alongside ours. The more I've seen, the more it's become my mission to uncover the natural world secrets, to show the amazing dramas that play out in our literal backyards, as well as shed light on the truth about some of the world's most feared animals. Since the second grade, I've heard horrific tales about this wandering spider, and I've traveled all the way to Ecuador to find out what the truth really is. In the case of the Brazilian wandering spider, stay tuned, because everything you thought you knew about these toxic arachnids might be about to change. Tell you what. This place is really nerve-wracking after dark. All kinds of things calling from the brush. The brothers actually wandered off. Sorry, I'm like, I'm like shining myself and shining the ground. There are venomous snakes and stuff out here, so I gotta be very careful while I, where I step. We've seen a lot of really unusual invertebrates. Um, what I'm really looking for are eye shine in these leaves here. Wandering spiders, while they could be technically anywhere, the easiest spot to find them is going to be on these leaves, sprawled out, kind of just waiting in ambush. The Ecuadorian cloud forest is teeming with life. One of the most biodiverse habitats in the world. And in charge of managing the populations of all this life are the spiders. We're not in Kansas anymore. In the South American jungle, spiders aren't just hunting small insects. No, amphibians and small reptiles are on the menu too because the spiders out here are giants. Okay, we got a big spider running over here. The appearance, hold on. No, it's not for Nutria. <laughs> got my hopes up. This, it's actually kind of great we got one of these. Here, let me get in our container real quick. There you go. Oh, there you go, there you go, hello. Kind of good we got one of these because this is actually a wandering spider look-alike we can find out here as well. So let me um, get her on a leaf real quick and we can take a better look at this spider. All right, what I got right here looks quite a bit like a wandering spider. It's the four eyes right in the front and it has that same kind of hairy, almost like a wolf spider kind of appearance that these wandering spiders will have. And believe it or not, you can actually find these on the same kind of habitats that a real wandering spider would be hanging out on. This is actually a banana spider or bromeliad spider. And the reason I can tell is right in the front there, her chelicerae, where her fangs are at, are really striped. And generally, you're not going to see that with Brazilian wandering spiders. And when I captured her, I got a little glimpse of a stripe on the underside of her abdomen there. And that is actually the red-thighed bromeliad spider, which has been super, super common around here, though most of them have not been anywhere near as big as this one. When I saw it running, I'm like, no way, that's a wandering spider, because those guys will actually sometimes roam around where they get their nickname from. Now, as frightening as the spider might look, unlike the Brazilian wandering spider, this is not a medically significant species. This is not something that you should be worried about, but knowing how to recognize that this is different than the wandering spider is not only good in case you come across one of these spiders in the wild, but also because this is one of the spiders that'll be getting killed out here just because it looks kind of like Venutria. 
the unfortunate thing with a lot of venomous animals is anything that looks remotely similar to them is gonna have the same bad reputation as the real thing. And when people act out of fear, they destroy these incredible, beautiful lives. Just like a wandering spider, it's eating frogs and little insects and stuff out here. And they are a pretty considerable little ambush predator. Of course, you know, I can't pass up a nice giant spider because they're so cool, so freaky looking. Always get your heart racing a little bit when you find them. But uh, this one is definitely not gonna get my heart racing as much as a wandering spider will if we see one. Out here, it's a constant struggle for survival, meaning that many of the animals in this biome have evolved potent venom to quickly subdue their potentially dangerous prey and defend themselves from becoming prey as well. The wandering spider lives a nomadic lifestyle in these jungles, hence its name. At any point, it could come across something much bigger or much meaner than it is, which is likely why it's evolved to toxic venom. The wandering spider possesses a really potent neurotoxin, one of, one of the deadliest in the world. When we're talking pure LD50, the lethal dose of venom, no other spider comes close to Phanutria. Depending on which species of wandering spider you're talking about, we're talking almost 400 times as toxic as a rattlesnake. And a bite from the spider is, is a medical emergency. Even if you survive um, without prompt medical treatment, you're gonna probably have permanent damage, um, especially if you're a guy. Well, since I have a family-friendly channel, I'm not gonna go into what priapism is, but if you'd like to Google it, you can see why uh, this is not a spider you wanna be bitten by. As we proceed deeper into the forest, we need to exercise the utmost caution. Due to the sheer toxic power these spiders possess, there is no room for mistakes. I wonder how true the stories are about these, these spiders being aggressive. You know, back home in the US, we have the cottonmouth. Most people out in the country would swear up and down that it's, it's a super aggressive, super mean snake, that it would chase you. I have worked with dozens of cottonmouths. Not a single one of them has shown me behavior that I would interpret to be aggressive. The Brazilian wandering spider seems to be similar. So I, I can't help but wonder if they're actually all that aggressive or if, or if this is a case of misunderstanding like the cottonmouth. My goal out here is to discover the secrets of the natural world, bring you the craziest biology of animals you thought you knew well, show you animals that you probably never even conceived could be living in your literal backyard, and of course, like we're doing today, hopefully myth busting one of the most vilified creatures on the planet. If you're new here and that's something that you're enjoying, consider subscribing to the channel. Oftentimes I'm showcasing creatures that have never been filmed on camera in human history. We have new discoveries every Saturday evening and we'd be really happy to have you. I would soon get a chance to put this suspicion to the test. We had fanned out to examine the vegetation along the main trail and I stumbled onto something very special. Yo, big spider. How big? Big. You got the camera? Are you rolling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am actually. Cool. Um, come here. Oh, wow. Dude. That looks... That is not a Coupianius. That looks like the wandering spider. In this case, I need to be very sure that what I think it is, is what it actually is. We've seen a lot of these Coupianius bromeliad spiders out tonight, and the biggest difference between a Coupianius, which is harmless, and a wandering spider, a Phanutria, is gonna be these tiger stripes on their chelicerae where their fangs are at. This spider doesn't have any tiger stripes. Okay. You're okay, sweetie. Oh, right in the container. Nicely done. Let's take a look at that underside. Yep. No mistaking it. Yo! <laughs> oh, we did it! I messed around. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a Brazilian wandering spider right there. All right, moment of truth. This is a spider right here. You do not want to be bitten by, that's for sure. I'm gonna get her off onto this piece of bark. So we can take a better look at her. There you go, there you go. There you go. Look at the way that thing moves. That is insane. Oh, hello. Right there is probably the most venomous spider in the world. These Brazilian wandering spiders are armed with one of the most potent neurotoxins in the arthropod world. And look at that thing. It is a huge, menacing spider. And one that I've heard plenty of legends about. The one that I've wanted to see for a very long time. Now, only the genus Phanutria is known to have as toxic venom as this creature does right here. And you know I just love the venomous creatures. Something about that incredible 
chemical power that's just packed into these tiny little animals. Like, look, it's a big spider, right? But like, you know, I could I could use a, like a flip-flop and smash it, right? And this that's a thing that actually happens. These spiders, you know, they are dangerously venomous, right? But like, let's be realistic. I am way more dangerous to this animal than it could ever hope to be towards me. You can see right now, she's actually calming down quite a bit. She's not as coiled up. She's mostly just using those front legs to kind of feel about. These guys do have good vision, but like the bromeliad spider, they actually do a lot more sensing with touch. They use their vision and their front legs to understand their environment and really interact with their world. And if she's sitting on a leaf, like when we found her, it's like a fishing spider back home in the US. If a little frog or insect lands on that leaf, that leaf will vibrate and it acts as an extension of this spider's nervous system. And she can detect how big the animal is and how far away from her it actually is. And she may be moving pretty slow right now, but don't be fooled. Wandering spiders can move. Trust me, if this spider wanted to, she could disappear into the darkness and be gone. The fact that she's very slow right now tells me that she's a little bit confused with the situation. You know, she doesn't want to be caught by some giant humans and filmed. You know, this, this is kind of like how, you know, humans talk about alien abductions. You know, this is basically an alien abduction for the spider, but she's not overly threatened. She can, she can tell if we were going to hurt her, we would have hurt her by now. So she's just kind of trying to figure out what the heck is going on and why she's not back on her banana tree. She wants nothing to do with us. This is not a monster. It is a monstrous looking spider. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, these are pretty fearsome looking, but it's not a monster, it's not evil, it doesn't wanna hurt you. Brazilian wandering spiders have a reputation as not just the most venomous, but one of the most aggressive spiders on the planet. That being said, look how she's behaving right here. She's out here in the light. This is not a comfortable situation for her, but she's sitting there just cleaning herself, absolutely chill. And what I actually wanna do, I wanna see if she will come onto my hand and chill out for a little bit. When I first started this channel, if you had asked me what spiders I would never free handle, the Brazilian wandering spider would have certainly made that list. But through years of studying some of the most vilified creatures in their natural habitat, I've seen stereotypes of just about every group imaginable broken. But with a spider of this caliber, I have to be aware of the stakes. I've made grave mistakes in the field before, resulting in some of the worst bites I have ever received. Those are lessons I get to learn hard, but walk away from. I do not get such luxury with the Brazilian wandering spider. And the only reason I'm attempting this at all is due to the placid nature this spider has shown me. This animal commands the utmost respect and she will receive it. As the spider made her first steps onto my hand, my heart nearly stopped in my chest. But what followed is an interaction that I will likely never forget for the rest of my life. That is electrifying right there. That is a Brazilian wandering spider in my bare hand. And you can see, yeah, I'm a little nervous because that is a very toxic spider to have in your hand. But as long as you stay calm, I don't make any sudden moves. She's gonna behave just like any other spider. This is not something I recommend you do at home. This is a wild animal, and wild animals can behave in very unpredictable ways. Now, I know firsthand not to underestimate medically significant spiders. That's why I'm being very, very careful in this interaction. You can see she has no ill will towards me. Just like any other wolf spider, fishing spider, she's just probing around with those front legs, trying to understand what's going on. And as long as I act as a surface for her to walk on, part of her environment, rather than a predator trying to attack her, she will be absolutely relaxed. How about that right there? We've been told these are the most aggressive spiders on the planet. But you can see right here, not a single mean, well, I, I would say bone, but they don't have bones. Not a single mean piece of her exoskeleton in her body. And oh man, is she gorgeous. I love the way these kind of giant spiders move. They almost look mechanical. And you can see there at her cephalothorax thorax, the way those little joints look. They look almost like some kind of clockwork or something. The mechanical idea is actually not totally incorrect because unlike a lot of insects, spiders actually move on a hydraulic system. They have a little pump, a muscle inside their cephalothorax that pumps their blood through their body there to move their legs. That is incredible. I love the way they move, just like that characteristic Brazilian wandering spider, those front legs out in front. 
Now, usually you see that as a defensive pose, but she's actually just exploring. Wow. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get her back out into the environment. She wants to hunt frogs more than she wants to hunt me, but this is an encounter I will not forget for the rest of my life. That is one insane arachnid. As we release the wandering spider back into the environment, I can't help but wonder what this says about Brazilian wandering spiders as a whole. This was one individual, and possibly caught on a very good day, but with sufficient time to calm down and realize she wasn't in immediate danger, she showed no signs of aggressive or defensive behavior, and no one received a dangerous bite of any kind. These spiders are extremely toxic, but I can say with certainty one thing. This interaction definitely casts doubt on the horror stories that I have heard for years about these magnificent animals. And with the Brazilian wandering spider behind me, I have to wonder about the horror stories I've heard about other spiders, and what the truth to those claims might actually be. Venomous or not, these creatures are integral parts of the natural world, and as long as we respect them and give them a healthy distance, no one ever needs to be in a situation where they might receive a deadly bite. Just like the wandering spider, many other animals are extremely misunderstood, which leads to a lot of unfortunate interactions with innocent creatures being destroyed. If you want to see just how dangerous some of the most infamous venomous animals are, check out this series where I investigate common myths and misconceptions around these fascinating creatures. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.